My name's Stacy Seabrook, and I approve Eric Jose on Making a Murderer to be able to use my songs on his channel. Thank you. My name's Stacy Seabrook, and I approve Eric Jose on Making. Do you pay your debt for someone you owe 36 million? You don't, it might as well be a gajillion. Oh, this is what you do. You charge the one you owe with murder, the debt goes to. Now, first, you gotta have. Not new. Now you cook that body up. All oh, well done. Just leave some pieces out for identification. Like the tibia. He's at 23. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Some There's of you ain't following, following me. me. But this brings me to an important part of the scheme. You got to <laughs> own the lab and forensics team. Ten part docu song. So I'll just give it to you. Oh, in point four. Do all these things and you can do your horn. You first have to get a kid to confess to the story of freedom. Block all the officers from following evidence where it leads them. Tell the media things that they don't make Sorry it started so late, folks. They don't ask questions, they just nod their heads. You gotta block the corner.
switch over here. Hello, how you doing? Hello, folks. So I assume, obviously, most of you have probably watched the premiere earlier about John DeHaan and the Bones. Um, obviously, stating a lot of the things that most of us already realized and knew. Some of the things, anyway. I mean, most of us who got into this early on realized that it takes a lot longer than three or four hours in an open fire to be able to try to burn the Bones to any kind of level to what they are. Um... And the prosecution's theory is that they were burned there. That's the prosecution. That's the one they went with. Um, and and so that you know, it's an interesting affidavit. Obviously, um, the way he ties in, he doesn't just say, "Okay, yeah, there was only forty to sixty percent of the bones in there in Stephen's burn pit." So therefore, that's the that that wasn't the primary burn site. He didn't just do that. He ties in with how the fact that these all these other bones found with the same degree of de of decalcination, uh, the same degree of and they're found like everywhere, suggests that they were all they all started together. So you know things like that, interesting stuff. So uh, let's see what everybody's saying here in the comments. Uh, do -do -do. Did you read all ten percent? Or did you read all ten? Uh, anyway, up for a lollipop? Anyone up for a lollipop? Okay. Way to stay on point. Robert Fabian lied. What does he know? Uh, let's see. That's a ludicrous theory. Glad you can make it with the rest of us. Uh, dun, 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 let's see. Oh, I stopped in for a quick peek, huh? Okay. It starts and ends with the bones, in my opinion. Zillow needs to focus on them, in my opinion. Oh, I think she's sufficiently focused. I mean, she's she certainly she. I mean, it was in the it was in the uh, in the documentary. The funny thing is, is that Thomas Thomas Hens comes in here and he says that Zellner's expert said that the the bones could have been burned in the burn pit. When he clearly says, if you watch the premiere from earlier, he clearly says that the prosecution says that that the the Stephen did a four hour burn, and it is impossible for the the bones to be degraded to that condition in just three or four hours in an open fire. So it's you know. Waiting for uh, Thomas Hens to come in here and defend his own honor. <laughs> so, you know. You, 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 it's. I mean, there's just so many things that you, that go around the bones because it's not just the fact that there's other bones found like in various places that have the same de degree of degradation to them. Hello, hello, Shona White. But it's not just that. It's that. Look at why were there why why were there no pictures taken? Um, you know, that doesn't really make sense. Uh, you know, really why you know why they weren't taking any pictures when they collected this i mean most officers know that when they're collecting evidence that logging things and and all that kind of stuff it's pretty important so it's it's just odd to me that they thought oh you know what we'll just proceed without pictures and then we have in court you know uh agent sturdivant on the stand saying oh i'll take responsibility for there not being any pictures oh well that's great that's great. You took responsibility. Okay, dude. Nobody's going to do anything about it. You know, anyway. It's, it just bugs me. It's like, yeah, taking responsibility. Where are the pictures? You know, why did you guys think you didn't have to take pictures? What? How did that, how did that whole reasoning happen? You know? So, anyway. So, I mean, it goes on and on with the bones. It's just bizarre there. 
the the talk about the bones getting uh, intertwined into the steel belt or whatever. I remember one. I know there was one of uh, you know. I think Zellner's experts was talking about how the steel belts, when the rubber gets burned away or whatever, when they're left over, they get like a like a bird's nesty type of uh, to where they almost they're almost like a velcro and hold on to things and 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 trap things and and they're just naturally that way when when the rubber's gone because they're just thin strips of steel coiled and they just get all you know and they trap things uh it's it's and, and when you think about how the bones were collected not very scientifically but with shovels and picks and that sort of stuff you, you know you got to imagine things were getting you know pounded into the the you know steel belt stuff that was left over in the fire pit so so are you suggesting that it took longer for the bones to get to that state i i'm am i suggesting i you know my whole point falcon is i'm not telling you anything dahan is john d dahan is telling you that it takes longer than three to four hours to burn a to get to get a body to burn to where the bones are in this state of degradation. That's John DeHaan that said that. You, know, you could try to pin it to me, you know, but it's not me. I'm not the expert. It's John DeHaan that said it. Is the incinerator at Scott's employment still in question? Uh, as far as I know, because of his owner's current theory, I would think so. Uh, listen to what degree were the bones that were supposedly found even human. Is that my answer and your final answer, Falcon? <laughs> Preisenberg, the pelvic bone, the pelvic bone was suspected human, right? That's, you know. <clears throat> I don't do the read, I do the vids. Uh, and they were in, and they were in both the Dassey burn barrel and SA pit. Corey is the primary burn location with the Dassey barrel. Uh, that could vary. That may be possible. Yeah, the bones. That is what. That's what was claimed. And whose or what bones were the supposed? Were they supposed to be? <laughs> uh, let's see. They used the golf carts to get to the quarry with burn barrel with with barrel and burn and with barrel in her body they use golf carts who's they there is so much donkey dung that I don't trust any of what the prosecutors have stated <laughs> that's true mama said uh, I have a hard time with the bones there was a massive forest fire in my area and the bodies recovered were nowhere near the condition of TH this fire was widespread and burned for days, just my opinion. I agree, and my my friend Johnny, as I showed you guys before, in that one video, man, he put a set of llama bones through two burns. Total of about, I think it was, in total, it was like about 11 or 12 hours of burning. And in fact, when he was collecting the bones from the, the, the burn site after the second one, when he was collecting those bones, everything was still way hot. He was having to pick it up with shovels and uh, get it out of the coals so that it could all cool off so that he could actually handle it on camera. So, I mean, it was hot, hot, hot. And those bones barely looked degraded, really. Now, granted, animal bones tend to be a little denser than human bones. But still, it's we're talking 12, 11 or 12 hours of, in, of intense heat and fire so big old bonfire too is huge the bones were not documented by by photos until 1110 by Eisenberg yeah I believe that's pretty much right uh, I want the facts I'm not interested in the fiction uh, let's see here. Hello, Andy. Uh, 
I'm just wondering what a significantly longer burn scenario does to the timeline. Well, I trust you'll figure that out, buddy. You'll, I'm sure you'll do some pondering on it and come to a conclusion. I know you. <laughs> <coughs> they even asked Brendan if he was using the golf cart and it tested positive with luminol test. Tested positive for what? I mean... The state introduced one bone that they proved to be human. Item BZ, the seven Loki shin bone, uh, and no documented evidence where it came from. The timeline isn't very clear, so it's hard to say what events took place on any day. Did anyone check the place on Xander Road for bones? I doubt it. I don't. I think they didn't. They ignored Xander Road almost completely, almost completely. I am waiting for our host to arrive and stay and stay so we can get this discussion moving. If you read about bones, barren pig bones can be mistaken for human people. You need to you need to Google before they say something to make their self Repetitive? Oh, you mean repetitive? Repetitive? Oh. Let's see. <laughs> Thank you, Rubber Ducky. It's, the bones are a huge issue for me anyways. I mean, anybody that, that goes and tries to follow the bones, and, I mean, even certain other pieces of evidence, you try and follow, those, follow them through queso reports, from beginning to end they like change property tags a number of times so it's hard to keep track of what pieces they're talking about here plus they make mistakes when they're when they when they um, refer to evidence and sometimes refer to certain pieces of evidence as the wrong number which then gets to be confusing at times and it's it, yeah if any, any anybody that's ever gone through that one it's it's a frustrating process <laughs> so yeah so anyways the you know let's think about something else about the bones that always bug me how big bad bear is what held up this investigation big bad bear big bad you know doggy was 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 what held up this investigation I mean, I find that to be highly suspect. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to be respectful about it and say I find that to be highly suspect. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's just to me, that's just another thing. How the heck are we letting just a dog hold up an entire murder investigation? Um, I mean, does the entire state of Wisconsin get paralyzed? When they run into a, like a dog, a stray dog, I mean, I don't know. The, it just seems preposterous to me that that bear could really seriously be the excuse as to why they did not find those bones before the 8th. Especially with all the shenanigans going on, like on the 7th, pulling Ertl over to the... Um, what was basically they thought it was a burial site what it just turned out to be was in a dig uh, it was actually a decaying tree stump was all it was and Ertl had to sit there and spend most of the day digging that thing up for no reason and no good um, and then the next day on the 8th right after they bring burn barrel 4 back to the Avery property an only burn barrel 4 uh, the bones appear in the burn pit and in the Dassey burn barrel so I don't know. It's strange stuff. There's just so much strange happenings around the bones. Uh, then, after the Burn Barrel 4, here's another great one. Burn Barrel 4 goes to Avery, goes back to Avery Salvage after being cleared, right, by Ertl and his team. They put it on a truck, send it back to Avery Salvage on the night of the 7th. 
On the 8th, bones are found uh, on the Avery property, right? Because Big Bad Bear is gone. And suddenly, Ken Kratz is talking to one of the Calumet deputies, and he's telling the deputy to make sure he brings Burn Barrel 4 back to Calumet County's long-term storage. Yeah. Ken Kratz knew that Burn Barrel 4 went over to Avery Salvage and, and was was concerned enough about it to ask for it to be brought back to Calumet County's long-term storage. I don't know. That seems a little interesting. That seems that seems a little a little bit strange there that 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 Kratz would be so you know uh, you know in tune with what was going on with this Burn Barrel Four amidst his duties as the lead prosecutor, special prosecutor, and everything that that babysitting a burn barrel was was high on his list of priorities i mm, just think that's interesting all right what do you guys got what do you guys got here Uyghur did such a good job on this he is now promoted yeah uh the state and fbi both have the exact same bone at the exact same time in different locations Let's see. From what from what you've seen, do you believe Bones are still 100% Teresa Hallbach? I don't know. I'm awaiting the outcome of this soil test and, and stuff that they're going to do and to see what that yields. Um before before I really make I think uh, a determination on that really I know they don't have animal control I know I have been studying this case long enough I actually do know that already <laughs> uh, cases cases of water bottles from investigators were photographed in the center of the alleged burn pit and bones so investigators walked across the criminal evidence of course yeah i mean this is absolutely nothing scientific about the collection or anything these cops have uh have impeachable character okay <laughs> when things are done sloppy you can't find that right joe uh let's see musical barrels yeah uh let's see ask me though I understand and respect your answer, buddy. Classy. Yeah, right on. <laughs> like I said, you know, sometimes, well, and a lot of times with this investigation. With this investigation, it's like a lot of times, it's just not there. Whatever you need to, whatever you need to make the puzzle pieces fit, it's just not there. Um, or it was, or it was obstructed, or it was obscured, or... It was held in Tom Fassbender's personal custody for 12 years. Uh, you know, that sort of stuff. That's what I mean. They could have just given Bear something like, yeah. And then they could have looked around. I mean, that's all they literally did. All they did was walk over there and look down. Oh, hey, look, bones. Right? It's just like... That, nobody could nobody could stand at the limit of Bear's leash and look around and see these before then. I don't know. It's 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 all so it's all such a joke, basically. That yeah, I don't know. Anyway, well, what I heard was is is. I guess they had collected some soil from the burn pit as part of the investigation. Selner wants to get that so that she can she so that she can determine the you know exact makeup of the soil from the burn pit in 2005. And then when Carmen's parents bring Carmen's bones to her so that she would be able to test those bones to see if they have the trace traces of that soil from Stephen Avery's burn pit. And that's, I think, what... That's what I remember hearing 
And that's what I think is possibly going to happen at some point as she looks into the Carmen Boutwell thing. To play off Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hardest puzzle to figure out ever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. What about the supposed burial plot? Burial plot? You mean the, the place I was talking about where they thought it might be a burial site and Ertl spent most of the day on the 7th digging it up? Is that what you're referring to? Because it, it was a decaying stump. A tree stump. So... Um, you know, and, and, and it's just, there's just a lot of reasons why the bones don't work. The timing doesn't work. The, the way that, the way that, you know, Tom Fassbender and, and, and Weigert are so key to mention parts of the body to Brendan so that he, so as they push for him to say things were in the fire, he'll, he'll say those parts of the body like they said. Um, you know, loading Brendan up with the information that they wanted to hear. And, and you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a freaking nutty situation. And the more, that, the more that they stand there like Leslie Nielsen in Naked Gun movies... With like the firework factory, you know, blowing up behind him saying, nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here. The more we see that from Manitowoc, just the more uh, it's just like, the more obvious it is and and how oblivious they are to the fact that this probably isn't going to just go away. At least not going to be going, it's not going to just go away anytime soon. The Carmen was cremated on 11-8 at 1.30 p.m. The bones were not photographed until 11-10 in, in Dr. Eisenberg's. Uh, so Carmen's cremains do fit the timeline. So they can in that sense that, yes, because they didn't take pictures. So that could be the explanation, folks, of why we don't have any pictures of them being collected. Because for them to have been pictures of that, then that, yeah, so... If that's the that's the implication here is were they using Carmen bones for some reason? Could they did Teresa just disappear and they couldn't actually find her? And so they needed a substitute. I mean, this is the questions that they raise. I I don't know, but I personally think that 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 Teresa is no longer with us, and I don't know what kind of games could have been being played with the bones, but. I don't know exactly how far those games go, but I do feel pretty darn confident that these bones moved and ended up ultimately in Avery's burn pit mostly and the Dassey burn barrel. And that I'm pretty sure of. Don't know exactly all the particulars on what happened and where it all came from. See, when you think a stump is a body, here's your <laughs> Bill Engvall. Yeah, I love Bill Engvall. She was temporarily buried before she was burned. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, no, I don't think. I mean, if you're asking according to the prosecution, I don't think they talked. I don't think they said that. Not when I am angry, I am not. This case just burns in my bones. Nothing to see here. 
You bunch of looky loos. Right, you know what I mean? Yeah, basically. We're all the looky loos, I guess, but still, it's, you know. Didn't the Hallbox have a cremation and a funeral for T Teresa? I believe they had a, like, a memorial celebration for her. Uh, and I think in which they put uh, some limited amount of her remain cremains that were released. I believe that's how it went. Um, can't believe they did that over a tree. Or it could be that she was raped in that spot, and there, and that's why the cadaver dog circled there. I guess maybe, yeah. It says it says my message was too long. Oh yeah, if you go over two hundred characters. Also, didn't they quote sixty percent of the bones were missing? They they said there was only forty to sixty percent of the bones. So basically, it's a kind of a either way. 4060. Um, there was something in the first MAM about her temporarily being buried, but I have heard nothing else about it. Uh, here, Teresa has a headstone. Uh, I said Stephen King would be jealous if he could write this freaky stuff. I was told I talk too much, Arlene. Okay. So, I mean, these are all the reasons why the, you know, the bones are unconvincing, you know. Casey's experts say it is impossible to be done in an open pit and barrels, possibly your thoughts. What I, well, from what I understand, they're saying it could be possible in a barrel because of the way that the barrel will contain the heat and concentrate the heat a bit more. But clearly, clearly in, in the affidavit that DeHaan offers, it clearly states that you cannot get that level of degradation on the, bo on the bones after just a three or four hour burn in an open pit fire. That, that he is absolutely certain of. Seems possible to save millions of dollars. They solidified Avery's conviction with Carmen's bones. I, I meant it might have just fallen into their laps and one or two people couldn't resist. Yeah, could be. I believe strongly that if Ellie had access to Teresa, dead or alive, uh, we would see her blood all over the trailer, either by a medical pint uh, or two or, or, or her body. So they had no access to her... A, I, they had no access to her, in my honest opinion. Uh, hey, that was supposed to have been erased. Her bones, uh, one of the most important pieces of evidence, was treated so poorly, and the collection was so bad that the clues had no had no one will know now. Let's see. We treated were, was treated so poorly, and, and the collection was so bad that the clues it hold no one will know. Now, right? Okay. Regardless of fuel, um, yeah, because the whole point is, Falcon, that because it's an open pit fire, the heat isn't contained. Or, or, so, because it just bleeds off in every direction, essentially, it, it doesn't, the heat doesn't get concentrated onto the bones like it does in a crematorium, or like it does in a burn barrel, because at least on, you know, bottom and, and on the sides, there's containment that keeps that heat trapped in and makes the heat more intense. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying in an open pit, you don't have that because the heat can just bleed off in every single direction. Except for down, pretty much. But, you know. What about the 24 teeth fragments? No DNA test on those.
That's okay, Jerome. At least we know you you're still you are still around. It would be very hard to do in the time frame, even with barrels. Correct. Uh, let's see here. Killer must have known how stupid the law in Manitowoc, and they were and they were sitting back laughing because they never thought it would turn out the way it did. Let's see. State's forensic anthropologist was unconvincing in her testimony about whether or not the bones were moved. Well, what I yes, unconvincing yes, and and what I find funny is she suggests that bones were moved out of the burn pit and into a burn barrel. Now I could like it's like I've said a few times. I could understand how animals might have drugged the bones away to a I don't know, possibly a gravel pit you know, in Manitowoc County gravel pit or whatever, or to some other places. But I cannot imagine animals dragging bones into a burn barrel. So, I mean, and then, so then the next question is, how do we explain how those bones got in the burn barrel then? Who did that? Why did they do that? And so then we now have this theory that, you know, because Josh Rodant said he saw a glow, but not a fire. Now it seems like the theories kind of go in the way of, that things that the body was being burned in the burn barrel now, so I don't know. We'll see how things all flesh out. This is why there needs to be an evidentiary hearing, so all this stuff can get argued by both sides in court, and it can be sorted out what's what, and if any, you know, if if what's what's factual, what's you know spurious or dubious, and what's you know completely ridiculous. I don't think Scott's trailer was ever searched. Hallbox could have given them her baby teeth. We will never know. Uh, so is it? Th so is it the time of the burn that is in in dispute, or the notion that it could have happened in the fire pit at all? Falcon, I, I don't understand the the state's narrative. States very clearly what they believe happened. And that time frame is not sufficient. That's, I don't know how else to answer your question. That's basically it. I mean, you can try to say, oh, but there's an explanation. The burn just went longer or this and that and da 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 Well, that's what the state should have said. Uh, Colburn Bruce from Taddock. <laughs> This is such a joke. It's to the point it's not laughable. Uh, let's see. No way it happened in the fire. No way it happened in fire pit. I agree, it's a joke. On my research, there is no way that her body would have been able to be burned like that in a barrel. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, like I said, this is why evidentiary hearings need to happen. So that things can be argued and figured out and experts can be brought in to determine whether or not, you know, things are true or whatever. So, that, like I said, that's why evidentiary hearings need to happen. Falcon, if in fact the primary site was the burn pit, it would have it would have had to maintain a high temperature for a long period of time. It's plausible that the body was burned on ten thirty one in the burn pit. Uh, well, I disagree. It's not plausible for me. Definitely didn't happen in the fire pit. I agree. No, of course not. It would have been the temp like like that of a cremation. The state said, "No, oh, not plausible. Okay, right on, Denise. The state said they believed the pit was the primary burn location based on the condition of the bones that were recovered from there. Yeah, and then they said that, and then they said that that they got that way within three or four hours of being burned in an open fire, in an open burn pit, and and they, you know, they went that they went that far." I have a question. Here in Belgium, people makes people make a very big fire for Halloween. 
Could Teresa's body have concealed? Could have been. Could Teresa's body have been concealed in by the killer? I don't know. Actually, I guess it's. It's a question I'm, I'm going to have to ask and find out how many trick or treaters the, uh, the salvage yard gets. But from gathering, you know, from what I've gathered, uh, from you know my talking to members of the family, uh, the Avery, the yard kind of is, uh, you know, the people in the area kind of just like avoid it and stuff like that. So. Uh, but I can find out and see if there's, you know, a lot of kids that come there trick or treating. If that's the case, yeah, there could have been a couple of, the, plausibly been a couple of adults. And anyway, let's see. In the burning infernos, even even the burn in Cali Paradise bodies are intact for sure because. They weren't cut, but skin was still on the bones, but charted. Charted? Or charred? Charred? That's kind of like what was going on with the with the shin bone, is that there was a tiny little bit of remaining, like, charred flesh still on it. And that's, what's, that's what has, was, uh, well, first of all, it was tested by Colhane, and she only got 7 out of 14 Loki on it by doing the kind of normal DNA test that the crime lab does. Then the D the the FBI took the shin bone and they did a mitochondrial t DNA test on that that flesh on the shin bone and that's when they came back saying that it was a match for Teresa. And they said that through the mitochondrial DNA test that that was proven. So According to the FBI, yes, it's matched to Teresa Halbach. But I know somebody else who's a, who's a molecular biologist who isn't so convinced by the FBI's um, findings. So. What's sad is... It wasn't obvious to any of the investigators or prosecution team that there was no way a body could have been cremated in a fire like that. They must think it was a PFM fire. Uh, the burning in front of us, I see. Jerome, I think the smell would have alerted people. The FBI said, or FBI said they could not rule Teresa out as a match, but did not confirm the match either. Yeah, but something there was something that FBI said, and I remember seeing something about a conversation Kratz was having with, I think, somebody, I don't know, like maybe Rohrer or something like that. And he was saying something along the lines of, he was saying basically something like about, he was it's he he was he was very glad that the FBI had come out and stated that the the the, the that it, that it was a match for Teresa so that he didn't have cuz that created a situation where they now had you know Teresa believed and confirmed dead by the FBI and he didn't have to say himself he didn't have to go out on you know he didn't have to step out on a limb himself and say that that had been proven definitively. So I thought, I thought that was interesting when I heard that one conversation where he was talking about how the, the FBI kind of got him off the hook because of, I guess, one thing they said that basically confirmed Teresa's death. All right. So I am, unfortunately, because I was running around so much today and didn't get to uh, really get prepared for all this as much as I would have liked to. I'm going to go ahead and carry this over into a live for tomorrow. Uh, I appreciate all of you for showing up and most of you, you know, all of you who were patient and waiting for me to, to, 
come you know and come and show up here but uh it's fact is i'm tired and uh i've just been running all day long since probably 5 30 this morning and i'm beat and it looks like for some reason the video and and my software here is beginning to have some trouble so uh before it starts to get too bad i want to go ahead and play a stacy seabrook song on the way out and uh, like i said we'll see you guys tomorrow sometime tomorrow uh, at a time that's friendly to the UK, of course. Oh, well, thanks. I am very tired. It's, it's, I didn't realize I was so tired until, I don't know, it just hit me about 10 minutes ago as I was talking. I was just like, oh, man, suddenly I feel very tired. So, but not only that, this, this software is having some trouble. I'm seeing some weird things happen on the video. I don't know if you guys are noticing it, but anyway, <laughs> you guys are all very welcome. And, uh, let's go out with Mr. Seabrook here and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow like I said UK friendly time important UK friendly time so here we go let me tell you about a story now we better talk bound about the law enforcement a right bunch of clowns how they wear their badge like a plastic crown how they stick into a story of which they are now bound it's a rabbit hole, they don't want you to go down. I go through Wisconsin, they're doubling down. See, they framed them once, and then they did it again. They did not count on filmmakers making M.A.M. They thought their lives were safe, all went by the ruse. They did not figure on 19 billion views. It'll make you shake your head and probably frown. Doubling down, I said they'll double down, and they'll triple down. They're heading down a road which they cannot turn around. They'll walk around like they'll be home free. Cause they control all the evidence on the local judges and found is the state's AG. But I got some news. It's as plain as day. It doesn't matter what the state or the guilty say. Cause we got Kathleen. Got him in her sights. She's a real life hero turning wrongs to right. No matter how, how hard that state's gavel pounds. Over in Wisconsin. They're coming down. I said no matter how, how hard that state's gavel pounds. It's coming down. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Remember, if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you tomorrow.